Hello ladies and gentlemen, Arthur is back and today we are going to take a look into console log and how you can master it to become a kick-ass developer. So I have prepared a couple of tips uh, that you can utilize and um, yeah, let's dive in. So as you can see, I have prepared a um, const users array with some data inside so that will help us to uh, run through some of our examples. And yeah, I suggest we dive in. So the first tip is basics of the basics. And I suggest we not stop uh, for too long on it. But let's quickly dive in into this one. And as you can see, this is console log info warning error. And you may know already about all of them. But it's all about printing data. And the only difference is how they are looking in your console. So if I go to my console over here, and if I don't forget to uh, save my file and refresh this page you will see the result console log and info are looking exactly the same warning and error are slightly more um, expressive so you can see them uh, in the console more kind of obvious uh, the only difference is basically the style that's pretty much it I think console uh, warning and error gives you a little bit of context but it's not much really uh, in general, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, all these printouts, I suggest you don't use for production, even errors and warnings. Uh, so some of these things can be used within your code when you catch some exceptions and things like that on different environments like test, dev, etc. So if you control with some environment variables, the environment um, of your application, and you can basically li listen for those, obviously you can keep some of the de like debugging or your uh, environment debugging if you like in place but in general the best practice is just to not print anything in production at least okay so keep this in mind cool now let's take a look into tip number two so this one is very interesting because you may not know about it so uh, have you ever wondered how to know how long uh, a piece of code that you have created or your debugging is taking to run so how many seconds milliseconds etc so for example you have a have an uh, idea that something is not right with the piece of code but you don't know really if that's exactly this part that takes ages or you want to improve your code for example you've created a loop or a function and you want to see how long it takes to run it so there is a very interesting uh, console um, methods for this so you can print out basically the uh, time that it takes uh, to run your code so you have uh, first method which is console time and you give it a name so this string here will be the name for your console time it will also print out in your console but we will see this in a second so basically you kind of wrap your code with the console time and console time end they should they must be the same name or loop in this scenario so it must be the same otherwise you will have an error so uh, and i will run this example for you let's comment this code out so to not Put too much noise in our console so if we go back here and refresh uh, for whatever reasons this shit is still printing um, I said JavaScript you know you never know what happens anyway you can see that odd loop is taking um, less than 0.1 uh, millisecond uh, and this is basically the time it takes to run this bit of code so a thousand iterations and to prove that, if we add a couple of zeros, you will see that this time should increase. Yeah, so it's now 24 milliseconds, so it drastically kind of increased. So this is how you can debug how long it takes. And there are good practices, etc., that you can read about how long it should take for your loops to run, blah, 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 etc. One tip, extra tip on this one I want to give you is be very careful when you use this console time uh, tracker because... I personally, uh, on my own, in my own experience, found interesting um, behavior. It's not a bug; it's actually just a behavior. So, as far as you are including any console um, methods or properties inside of the console time wrapper, so as you can see here in this example, if, for example, I want to 
also console log some stuff inside of the uh, console time and console time and it drastically bumps the time of the execution so you may be confused by that so for example if you're debugging and you also want to console time it will bump your uh, running time so and to prove that I will show you that example so console log I within time and and time uh, so as you can see previously it was taking 24 milliseconds so if I now refresh you will see that it's now 32 milliseconds, 31, 32, 31, 32. So plus 10 milliseconds just because of the console log. And if we remove this, you can see that it's again around 22, 25. So it bumps a lot of um, uh, time into your execution if you use console uh, log or any other console uh, methods within uh, your time kind of um, methods so bear this in mind because this is very important and it will it may really confuse you all right so I will comment this out to not put too much noise into our console again and let's go to tip number three tip number three is about counting how many times the code uh, has been uh, triggered so for example you have a function or a variable uh, or a I don't know some sort of a, a module that you have like file um, that you want to know how many times it has been used or executed and this is a very interesting one because very often you will face situations where you um, have something being triggered twice or three times and this is quite like a uh, common thing uh, where it's triggered like a couple of times but you are like no it should be one like what's going on okay and uh, you kind of very confused so console count is actually allowing you to track how many times exactly part where you've put that um, debugging line is executed so for example as you can see i have here uh, value is three function which basically checks the value that you pass is equal three and if it is it returns true if it's not then it's false and a loop of um, five iterations okay well it's actually going to be six because it starts from zero but it doesn't doesn't matter so and if the function returns true we break the loop so uh, and we want to know how many times uh, value is three function has been called okay uh, usually you would do some sort of a uh, console log with some iterators etc etc but what you can do you can simply add this console count with some text in there so it's like so that you can identify basically what you are debugging so for example in this case its value is three has been called and if we save that and go to our browser and refresh our page you will see that value three has been called one two three four times because we start from zero and we are checking for number to be three it's go it goes three uh, zero one two three and it's four iterations okay and this is how simple uh, you can count how many times the piece of code has been uh triggered so for example function or method or uh something else like module okay so tip number four uh it's interesting one i actually only um found this recently so uh, it was an uh, kind of interesting discovery for myself as well um, so console log assert so what it means you can actually debug in a way you usually test your code so you can put some assertions and very quickly so it accepts two params one is the true false boolean basically it accepts boolean uh, in order to kind of uh, tell your code that it's been uh, kind of uh, good or bad assertion basically and then the message so you can kind of write some some like temporal tests if you like so uh, and it's very simple you basically you can write some functions that are testing your code and pass the results as a booleans into your asserts and then put some messages and I prepared this example where I'm checking if 2 plus 2 equal 4, 4. and uh, if we go to the console you will see that um, 
nothing is printed out because 2 plus 2 is 4, so it returns true. But if we change this to 1, so 1 plus 2 obviously is not 4, and yeah, if we check it out, it will say, oh man, assertion failed, assertion failed. Oh yeah, that's a bit of a repetition there. But anyway, this is our message here. So we can say assertion failed, um, it's not full. Okay, and if we check it out again, you can see that this bit here is our message. And this is quite interesting because you can build some interesting, exciting tests which will allow you to quickly debug your code. So it's not for actual code testing and making some coverage with unit tests, but probably you can build a framework on that uh, because it, it, it throws exceptions, etc. So you most likely can actually build a framework on top of that. But this is a very interesting feature to debug your code. So the next one uh, is tip number five, and this one is quite often used and very interesting and powerful as well. So, and this is where we're gonna use our data examples we have prepared early on that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, so it's about string substitution and there are a few options. So if you don't know what string substitution is, it's basically you're putting a placeholder inside of your string uh, like these, um, percentage I, S, O, and F, and these will be replaced with some data that you pass as a next parameters, okay? So I've prepared this quick example here. So we are looping through the users of, uh, array, which I prepared here, as you can see. So it's an array of three users. And in this example, we are, ooh, we are looping through this array and we are getting each user in each loop and then we are using these uh, placeholders like I and S. So S is for string, so we are passing username into it, okay? And then I stands for integer, which is interesting because we have only numbers in JavaScript, but uh, we pass second parameter for second placeholder. It's important, okay? So the uh, index of your parameter equals uh, kind of index of your placeholder. So S is first one, so username. I is second one, comma, user age, okay? That's very important. And what will happen, They these placeholders will be actually replaced with the data inside of these uh, parameters passed, okay? And to prove that, so we should have three printouts of three users uh, with different data uh, instead of these placeholders. And voila, as you can see, we have three outputs. Arthur is 30 years old. Chris is 53 years old. Howell is 65 years old. And this is how it works. It's very powerful. So you can basically quickly debug multiple data instances and uh, of different type. Uh, and you can put some strings in there, etc. So it's quite interesting and powerful. Uh, debugging mechanism basically okay so i will comment this out again to allow us to see better the next um, example and finally we have tip number six which is also quite interesting personally i've never used it properly in my actual like career or like um, commercial experience but it's quite interesting one especially if you're debugging or you want to see some complex data in your code so for example in our case as i mentioned we have this user um, uh, users array with uh, user objects inside and what we can do instead of printing it out with console log as you, as normal where you will have to click and like you know expand some params and see what's inside etc etc what you can do you can use console table though in this case you most likely will need to read a little bit of documentation about it to see what the structure is expected so it may display your data a little bit like incorrectly uh, well, in terms of like how it will be aligned with columns, etc. But if you know how it works, so in case of this user, well, users array with user objects, for example, it's quite simple. It's basically accepting an array of things and then you just print, it, print them out. So it looks like this. Uh, if we say that and refresh, you can see that we have a table of three users and we have name column, age column. So it's an array, so each index uh, key of the 
item is on the left and like IDs basically. So this looks very similar to how you would get data from a uh, SQL database, for example. And you can see that all the properties were converted into table headers and all the data is then printed out with actually zebra as well. So you can see that every line is like uh, darker, lighter, darker, lighter. So it's easier to read as well. And all the data is basically um, pushed under each column, which uh, is named by the property the data was aligned to. And it's quite interesting. And you, and you also have uh, a normal printout. So this is what I mentioned as a um, console log debugging uh, in a normal way. So you would have this. So you would need to expand and see like properties. It's, it's okay. I, I usually use this uh, method actually. So uh, where you have just an array and you need to expand the extra data and see what's inside. But if you wish, you can use this very visual um, variant. It's very cool, especially if you want to show some data to a like product people, for example, who are not very familiar with JSONs, arrays, objects, etc. So you can just print out a quick data set in the table view and it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's it basically. So that was the last tip. As usual, like, subscribe and comment down below this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, next videos, just don't be shy and post them in comments below. And see you in the next one. See ya.